That is an unnecessary amount of water <laughs> for this talk. Hi, everyone. Hello. How's everyone doing? <laughs> wow, stressed, huh? So thanks so much for joining yeah, us Yeah, thanks so much for having This is so cool. Can I just take a second to say how cool this is? I am clearly not smart enough to be in this room, but uh, this is just very cool. So thank you so much. I'm very humbled, very honored to be here. Uh, I have prepared nothing, so ask me anything. <laughs> I mean, literally, my life is an open book. I wanted to start by asking, you went to the US to study business. Yeah. How did you go from that to acting, and when did you realize that you wanted to do acting professionally? I went to US for business because I didn't know what I wanted to do, and marketing seemed like an easy way to get good grades. <laughs> I was pretty... I was pretty... Um, bad at uh, studying. Um, so I just went, I got a good scholarship, and then I actually, to be completely honest, walked, I, I wanted to make friends because I was very lonely, so I wandered into the theater and stuff, and I was like, wow, these girls are very cute and stuff. And I, I was just lonely, I wanted to make friends. And I auditioned for a play, and I was really bad. I had to play like an old man. Uh, and I was just the worst, but I got in because there's not enough people in the theater to be in the play and I got in and that was that. So I fell in love with it and then the acting teacher there said take some classes and I did and then I, about my junior year, junior year is uh, third year. Uh, in my third year I decided I'm going to do this. I called my parents and I said I want to do it and then they said, uh, okay, that's fine, but you know, finish your business degree so you have something to fall back on because it's such a difficult industry. And then I went and got my master's in acting, and that was that. And then, like your parents said, it's such a difficult industry to get into. Yeah. How did you land the role of one of the stars in a leading Just sitcom? Talent. I'm so talented. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, just really good looking and talented. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because looks really helped for that role. Uh, no, I. You know, I. It was a funny thing. I mean, I just auditioned for, uh, I was out of grad school. I had a new agent, I had a manager. I was just getting started in the industry. I only had 10 months left on my visa because I have a crazy life, but I was born in London. I grew up in India and I had 10 months left on my work visa, OPT, we call it in US. And I auditioned for this thing and I got it. It just happened like that. You know, it took two weeks to get the role and then it took six weeks for me to get picked up on the show. And then the show itself got picked up. And then that was that. And then eight episodes in, there was a huge writer's strike in Hollywood. Um, so we didn't know if the show was going to come back after eight episodes. And then it did. And the rest is history. So. And the show has lasted so many seasons. Yeah. Without sort of getting old. And it's kind of, it stays funny the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about the writing and... Yeah, and it's, why you feel it's so all the angry. writing, you know. I mean, really, it's all the writing because we talked about how it could have become such a one-dimensional show, yeah. um, and the writers really did a good job about keeping the characters evolving as much as they could in their own trapped perception of themselves, like as much as they could grow slowly, you know. Um, but yeah, it was all the writing, really. You know, it starts and ends over there, and we got very lucky that the seven of us had great chemistry. The five of us to begin with, and then you put the two girls in, and then it became a whole new show, and so. It was really a dream come true, obviously. Dream, yeah. Are there any favorite moments from the many years that it's banned? That I mean, so many. Us? I mean, so many. Have you guys seen, have, has everyone seen the show pretty much? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I figured, why the hell else would you be here? <laughs> uh, there was a really sweet episode we did where um, I think Penny gives Sheldon uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy DNA napkin, I think, and, and then she hugs her. It was a very sweet moment. Uh, the first time Sheldon and Amy say I love you, which was very sweet. You know, the episode where Howard loses his father, uh, loses his mother, because Carol Ann Suisi, who played his mother, died in real life, and we had to do an episode where she died. And uh, that was a very sweet episode. When they won the Nobel Prize in the second to last episode, that was very cool. Just the way their writers had done that. Yeah. What, seriously? Come on. It's been like, what, 10 months? It's been almost a year. 
You know that one friend who like you who hasn't seen like Breaking Bad or something, and then it's been 14 years since the season finale. They're like, shh, 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 don't ruin it. Get a life or get new friends. <laughs> Uh, it was really cool meeting Stephen Hawking. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, it was really funny because Stephen, K Stephen Hawking, Stephen. So Stephen, uh, you know, Stephen, um, he, he came to watch a rehearsal and Simon, who plays Howard, was doing the voice, making fun of him while he was watching. And uh, that, was, that was hilarious. Uh, that was really cool. I mean, we've had so many great guest stars on, you know. Um, but I, it's just, it's, I was just telling Sarah before this, it feels like a breakup, you know, like uh, it's hard to think about that part of my life because it's still very fresh, even though it was made, it feels very fresh to me. So it's, it's hard, it, it's a weird thing, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, well, my next question was going to be what it's like to have the show over and are you all sort of still in touch? Yeah, but it's, we, we're in touch, but it's like we don't, it, it's, it's such an odd place to be in. It's so difficult to explain because we're the best of friends, but it's very difficult to see each other right now because, again, it feels so fresh, you know, like uh, I, I can't explain it. We're always texting, but we're like, we're not able to still just see each other all the time because it feels like seeing a, a long lost lover or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but uh, it's nice. It's given me an opportunity to do other things. And um, yeah. And playing Raj on the show, a lot of the fun that's made of him is based on sort of classic Indian stereotypes. Yeah. Was there ever anything about this that made you feel a bit uncomfortable or anything that you were sort of like, oh, I don't really want to do that? Not really. I mean, I don't think that we did. I mean, it'd be one thing if we only made fun of India or something, but you know, no one was spared <laughs> on the show. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that's the thing. People say, well, don't you feel bad about making fun of your country? I'm like, well, First of all, I'm a comedian. I really have the ability to laugh at my own idiosyncrasies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, we make fun of everyone. It's a, it's a comedy. So no, I don't think I did anything that made me feel uncomfortable. But I definitely get those tweets and messages like, you know, you've betrayed your country and you're such a stereotype and this or that. But you know, I always say I did something that om almost uh, worldwide 50 million people watched a week there's going to be some people who don't like it, you know, and there are going to be some people who do like it. And to be an actor, you also have to have thick skin. Uh, imagine if you guys are studying, you know, but imagine you guys do projects or essays. Your teacher probably reads them and grades them, right? But imagine if 50 million people looked at your project every week and they all got an opinion on what they thought about it. That's what it feels like to be an actor. So. Uh, uh, not that I'm complaining or that uh, stupid actor complaining about his life or anything, no. But uh, there is this, you know, you have to develop a thick skin because uh, A, you're very expendable, like, uh, you know, you're very dispensable. There's, there's a lot of great talented actors and you never know when your time is going to come and you never know when your time is going to finish and, and you have to uh, just really have thick skin, you know. And on, on that point, you, I was reading that you took a social media break once the show was over. Yeah. What, what was that like? Do you feel any pressure to use social media that comes with fame? I like using it now more so to uh, sort of, I went through a tough time in my life and I really use it now to help people who may have been going through something similar. Um, I don't find the pressure because I don't care that much about being famous. You know, it's just something that came with the territory of being on the show. Mm -hmm but it's nothing I chased and I don't care so much about it. And I think in fact, the more Instagram followers I have, which is funny because I do want to take one Instagram picture after this for, with everyone <laughs> in it, if you don't mind, uh, I have a cool idea. Um, but uh, no, I don't feel any pressure. I don't feel any, sometimes what I'll do is I'll delete the app from my phone so I don't like get into that cycle at night, you know, like you press that search button. I follow a lot of like uh, golf videos, so I'm just like, <laughs> you know, so like, and then you catch yourself, like what am I doing, you know? So now I just delete it. And you grew up in India for, yeah. for the first part of your life. Can you tell us about these early years um, in Delhi and how that shaped the, the rest of your career in life? Uh, excuse me, growing up in Delhi was great. Uh, I don't know if you've all been to India or not, or some of you or not, but um, 
for me, I feel so lucky that I did because I was surrounded by, I grew up in a house where my, my I lived on the ground floor, my, grands, my grandparents lived on the first floor, all my cousins lived on the second floor, my aunts lived on the third floor, like we were like in this big joint family house and so that was really wonderful because you never felt like you were alone. It was kind of this beautiful mess, you know, everyone was on top of each other and I really miss that living in LA because it can feel a bit sterile and, and far away from everything that I'm, I've been in America a long time now, but I miss that. I miss that everyone being on top of each other kind of thing. I really love that, you know. I don't like uh, being alone so much. A part of your life growing up in India, you explore that in your memoir, Yes, My Accent is Real. Yeah. Can you tell us about the, can you tell us a bit about the memoir and what made yeah, you write it? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to sort of normalize the journey from Delhi to Hollywood to tell people if you want to be an actor, it's okay, you can do it and it's not, this untouchable thing, you know, we're just, it's like doing anything. Uh, so hopefully inspire some young people to become artists if that's what they wanted to do. Um, also, a lot of people don't know that I'm from India. They think I'm either American or that I am British. I guess my passport is British, so, but colloquially, they don't know that I'm Indian. That's, and also when I was writing it, I was like, let's just call it, yes, my accent is real for now, and then we'll figure out what it's called later on. And then it just stuck, and that became, the thing and I didn't want it to be a memoir so much and some of the chapters were a bit like teaching like white people about Diwali and like Holi and things that we do in India from my perspective and uh, white people I mean generally the whole world not Indians so sometimes when Indians read it they were like why are you talking about these things that we do all the time that's so dumb and I'm like yeah no I get it but it's for okay I can't please everyone okay just leave me alone um, so yeah you mentioned that now that the show's over, you have time to explore other things. Can you share any upcoming projects with us? Yeah, I'm in London right now. I'm doing a show that I can't talk about, that I told some people about already, who were in the room <laughs> earlier. So I'm doing a show for Apple right now, but I can't say what it is. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> anyway, we're a few episodes in, so if I get fired, you'll know why. <laughs> so I'm in London right now um, doing that. So if you see me in London, that's why I'm here. <laughs> we'll move to the audience for a few questions now. Yeah. So if you have a question, raise your hand and wait for the microphone to come to you. And then please stand while asking your question. Yeah, yeah. And could we start with the member in the front row? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Govin. Um, What's you your name? Govin. Govin? Yeah. Um, I actually just started watching the show because U.S. Netflix isn't as good as U.K. Netflix, but yeah. um, you're part of, basically you're part of like the Indian diaspora where a whole bunch of Indians just moved over to different countries. So whenever you go back to India, do you kind of feel like an outsider, especially after like growing up there and everything? Uh, no, I don't feel like uh, an outsider. I feel very much at home uh, over there. As much as I feel at home in LA now too, you know, and in America. Uh, but Delhi's changed. The city has changed, you know. It's moving very rapidly. Uh, it's expanding very rapidly. So, no, I don't feel like an outsider. Actually, that's not true. I think I do a little bit. I feel like I'm a child of nowhere now. You know, I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm not Indian enough to be Indian. I'm not American enough to be American. I'm not British enough to be British. You know, I don't know really what I am, I guess. It depends on the day. <laughs> You know, yeah. Thanks. Could we go to the member in the third row? Yeah. Hey, Kunal. Um, thank What's you your name? Hannah. Hannah? Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. Uh, I wanted to know what your favorite line is from Big Bang Theory and also a small request. Yeah. Just as you're leaving, do you think you could say that line that you say at the end of your planetarium show? Oh, God. <laughs> what was that line? There's a big pause there, right? What is that line? Thank you for joining th with me through what? the stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, something. Yeah. My favorite line from Big Bang Theory is when I said, shut your ass. <laughs> I'll never forget that because Penny comes to me and starts giving me gossip about Sheldon and Amy sleeping together. And I literally, I read the script and I was like, wait, that, can I even say that? And literally the line is, shut your ass. Like, that's the line. So. Cool, I hope this never makes it on the internet. This is gonna be on YouTube. I signed that waiver. <laughs> I've said white people and shut your ass. I, you can't, this is like, this is just a nightmare. 
came to Oxford. <laughs> My parents are so excited. Beta is going to Oxford today. <laughs> Way to like bring the family name, man. I even put on this suit. I rented this suit from Paul Smith. I didn't rent it, guys. It was given to me for free. <laughs> no, I, I just, I wore this to the Golden Globes. Um, it's just a little award show that I... Uh, <laughs> funny thing about uh, most of the award shows, uh, you, you know, the first time I went to the Emmys, it was a huge deal for me. You know, I'm a young actor, I'm going to the Emmys. And you go and you're so excited and I, they send you a limo, you know, and I drank like almost half a glass of, uh, half a bottle of champagne in the limo. I was so excited and nervous. And I get to the red carpet, okay? And I have to use the bathroom. But the bathroom is at the end of the red carpet. So, no jokes, I run across the whole red carpet. You know, like, all these actors are in there taking pictures. I'm like, hey, excuse me, sorry, sorry. Like, go use the bathroom. Then I have to navigate myself way back to the beginning of the red carpet. That was very embarrassing. And, uh, and at the end of the award shows, after the governor's ball and everything, everyone is waiting for their limos to pick them up, okay? Doesn't matter who you are, how famous you are, everyone is famous there, but you're waiting for your limos. And it is like the wild, wild west. I mean, you know, people are drunk and like people's heels and they just, all these women are just rubbing their feet because their heels are hurting and they have all these gift bags and everyone's screaming, where's my limo? And there's a guy on the mic saying, limo, George Clooney, L51, L51, all right. Aniston, L53, and like, wait, where's mine? And it's just, it's the illusion is broken very quickly, you know? And then, um, so yeah, it's good, it's good to go once. We kept losing though, we never won. We lost in the beginning. It was always 30 Rock that kept winning. And then who was winning? Then Modern Family started winning. So between 30 Rock and Modern Family, I think we got nominated seven, six, seven, and we never won any of them. It's okay, we lasted 12 years, we'll be okay. Can we go to the number in the back row over there? How are you guys feeling Friday? Is it a good day to like, is it a like, relaxing day at Oxford or no? Or? No? Yes or no? I walked by 17 pubs coming here, guys. Like, don't act like your life is so serious right now, okay? <laughs> People were smashing beers at like 3 p.m. I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, it's really nice to see that you can actually talk to girls. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, imp I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that Never. Yeah, um, thank young you. Young Sheldon was quite successful. So what, what do you think about Young Raj? You know, if they aired that, do you think that would be a great idea? Young Raj? Great, yeah. It'll probably be old fat Raj at this point. I mean, Young Raj, I don't know. Uh, maybe, look, I'm, you know, I, I'm not in the, I, I did, yeah, okay, cool. We'll do it, we'll do it. Yeah, I'll, thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll make a call today. <laughs> young, young Raj, I don't know. Maybe. Right now, I'm just taking a break from the whole Big Bang world, you know. Could we go to the member in the first row? Can I ask a question? These, these, does anyone know the history of these busts that, that are staring at us right now? So they're, um, they're ex-presidents of the union. Who they're ex-presidents of the union? Yeah, and they're oh. meant to like, scrutinize the current president by looking. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> I'm never, <laughs> look, I'm never getting invited back, right? I might as well just say anything I want. <laughs> so, my name is Maxwell. Absolutely amazing to see you. Cool. Um, I understand you credited your success to your devastating good looks and talent. Yes. But have you ever found, have you ever thought that maybe you weren't good enough? Has there ever been a point where you've questioned yourself at any breaking point there? Or have, have you always had the devilish good looks, talent, and confidence? <laughs> Um, well, I was being facetious about that, uh, but thank you for your compliment. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, of course I doubt myself. You know, I was, I mean, I was nervous coming here today uh, because I guess at the end of the day, it's your own voice, right, that you have to live with in a way. It's your own thoughts, it's your own self that you live with, really. It's not the outside circumstances, ultimately, when you look within, the voice that is within you is the one you're competing against. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, of course, there's many moments I doubt myself, but what happens and what will happen too with experience and with age, uh, you really begin, you don't care so much. You end up caring less and less. Right now, every decision you make, you think is going to be the most important decision you make in your life. Right? That's what comes with the age that you're at and what comes with college. What should I study? I have to get this grade and if I don't, then this is going to happen and that's going to happen. All that stuff you realize just equalizes itself because nothing really happens. That's the truth. I mean, you think all these things are going to happen and even when it's happening to you, there's a normalized, life normalizes itself. You know, so, the only, so yeah, I doubt myself, but it doesn't matter so much anymore because the, circ, the, sort of the stakes become less the older you get. I can't explain it better than that. I don't know why. I think maybe you become more at peace with yourself. Um, the voice that I'm talking about kind of shuts up a bit because you, you, know, you don't give it that much power. And you fail a lot. It's going to happen to everyone. Don't worry. <laughs> Things are going to go south, and you just grow thicker skin, and you know, yeah. So yeah, I doubt myself, but I believe in myself a lot more than my doubt. You know. If we go to the number at the end of the second row. Hello, it's really nice to see you. Um, I was just wondering if, in another life, do you think you'd genuinely enjoy being an astrophysicist? In another life, would I genuinely enjoy being an astrophysicist? Yeah, look, I think to be completely honest, it's, it's, uh, uh, to be completely, uh, to be completely honest, I'm very fascinated with all things, the cosmos, you know, because we are sitting on a spinning planet in the middle of infinity. I think it's pretty cool. We get caught up so much in our daily existence that we forget that it's insane. We don't know right now which side up or down we are, where we are. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's, I'm fascinated by it, you know, um, yeah. I wish there was a more profound answer. I did say infinite and cosmos, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Could we pass over just to the number next to Hi, my name is Divya. Um, how much physics did you know before you did the show, and did you learn a lot of physics on the show? No, I didn't learn anything. I mean, I... <laughs> You know, it's just one, through one year out the other, to be honest, because you're just trying to get prepared for the next episode. You know, Jim, Jim Parsons, who plays Sheldon, had so much to learn, and like, he would just have these cards, and he would, you know, he had the most of the jargon, so, uh, um, but nothing sticks. You know, you're just trying to get ready for the next episode. You know, someone says, oh, uh, uh, you know, I use, you know, did you learn? Uh, no, I, I didn't really learn much about physics. You know, I just played that character. Uh, Maya Bialik, though, is, is a real a PhD in neuroscience. So she was actually knew all that stuff. She would correct the writers and stuff. But we had a, we had an, uh, David Salzberg, Professor David Salzberg at UCLA was our science consultant. He was, so all the science was real and came from him. Because if we got something wrong, which I'm sure they did, we would get a lot of hate mail, you know. So we tried to make it as authentic as, when I say we, I mean the writers and the science consultant tried to make it as, authentic as possible, you know. Is the weather always this shitty? <laughs> Sorry, is it always like this? Yeah. In February? February is bad, right? Dude, I was doing, I'm shooting this thing and I was doing this jogging scene for three hours in Hounslow the other day, which is cool because I did, when I lived in London and I was three years old, it was in Hounslow, go figure. And um, it was so cold. I mean, like, I was wearing thermals and it was still so cold. Anyway, that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the hand in the back row. Yeah. Just, just speak it out, don't worry. Oh, we need it for the recording. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Paul. Um, just two small questions. First of all, how do you find the result, Big Bang Theory, that everyone's in, everyone is in a relationship except Raj? Yeah. <laughs> well, is that a comment or a question? I, it's a question. Oh, how do I feel about it? Yeah. I mean, I don't care. The show's done. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, I think there's something poignant. You know, it could have been easy that he found someone, uh, but I think it's something poignant that the one character that believed so much in true love was the one that never found it. I think there was something very cool about that. You know, it doesn't have to be such a neat ending because what the writers 
said when they were trying to culminate the end of the series was that we are saying goodbye to Big Bang, but in the world of Big Bang, these characters are waking up the next morning and their life is continuing just as it was, right? So we're the ones saying goodbye to it. But in the world of the boys and you know, Raj and all, they're continuing their lives. So in that world, maybe he has found love. I don't know, I don't know. And the second one, do you think if there's anything in common between you and Raj Kusapali? Yeah, I mean, why are you giggling, guys? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, there are attributes that I bring, uh, obviously, to everyone brings an attribute of themselves to the characters that they play. Uh, I'm quite, uh, I can be quite, um, you know, not a jokester, I guess, but I, Raj was kind of wicked with his friends, and, you know, I have a slight innocence to me, too, and a playfulness and a boyishness about me that, and a naughtiness about me that I think I bring to Raj, but I don't have a lot of similarities with him, to be honest. At least that's what I think. Ask my parents or someone. <laughs> Could we go to the member at the end of the first room? Is there heating in this building? No, that's very bad. <laughs> you should have told me I would have worn my jacket. <laughs> Hi. Uh, did you ever have any problem with the live audience not laughing at a joke? Like, did you have to have, ever have to cut a line because it just got no reaction? You know, we, not a lot to be completely honest, the, but yes, when we were taping live, all the time there would be a joke that didn't really get the reaction we wanted to. So the writers would have alt jokes. So they would run in, tell you the new joke. You'd have to memorize it in like 10 seconds and then retake it. And so, yeah, it would happen. Um, but towards the end of the series, people knew these characters so well, and people were flying in from all over the world because they're only 250 seats, you know, which doesn't, it's not a lot. Like, so people were flying in, so what would happen is the first few takes, people wouldn't laugh that much because they're like, oh my God, we're here and we're looking. They were so sort of um, intimidated because they were suddenly in front. We're like, we're like here, you know, we're like real people walking and talking and like right here. And I think they were intimidated, but what happened is people would start laughing before the joke was even out of the character's mouth because they kind of knew what was coming. So we'd have to stop takes and be like, okay, wait till the end of the joke before, because once they laugh over the joke, you can't take the laugh out. It's really hard in editing to take the laughs out. You know what I mean? Uh, but having a live audience was great. It was like, uh, just great. You can't, it's very difficult to do that type of comedy without laughter, you know, without uh, having an audience. People do it, but I'm so glad we had an audience, you know. Could we go to the member at the end of the second row? Uh, hi, I'm Raghav. Um, are we ever gonna see you dancing in Bollywood movies? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to get a six pack first, bro. Like, <laughs> look, uh, I'd love to do something in Hindi. I'd love to do something in India. I would love to, and there's been some opportunity here and there, looking at scripts. Um, dancing, I don't know, like, I think I'd, I'd really have to, I mean, to be honest, I would. I mean, I have to probably, like, bulk up and look like a movie star to be able to do that kind of thing, you know? Uh, maybe, who knows? I don't try, I try to keep everything, an open mind to everything in life, yeah. Could we go to the member at the other end of the row? Hi, um, I have one question about Cinnamon in The Big Bang Fury. Because yeah. obviously you had a very intense relationship yeah. and highlight of it, would, I would say, is making out with a dog. How did yeah. that feel? How was your experience with acting with a dog? Are you asking how my experience is making out with a dog? Both. <laughs> <laughs> making out and acting. You know, I mean, like, I'm just, let's, like, we'll erase this tape after this talk, and I'll make up a great story about how philosophical this meeting was today. <laughs> Man. I had all this, like, knowledge I was going to give you guys, but... <laughs> um, funny story, the dogs uh, were actually twins. They were two. They looked exactly the same. And depending on who was more lively that day, they would... <laughs> put that dog in the scene. One was called Endeavor, and the other one was called Endeavor, and then one passed away, unfortunately, and then there was only Endeavor left. Um, but, you know, 
every actor dreads working with animals because they're very unpredictable. So you're just sitting there and, you know, like I'm doing the scene and the trainer is like sitting there with peanut butter in her hand trying to get, you know, cinnamon endeavor to like do something. And making out with the dog was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> I mean, I love my dog. Uh, but that's like intense, like that was intense. You know, that was very intense. I don't even make out with my wife like that. Like that was, <laughs> that was really intense. Guys, what other great questions do you have? I mean, I can't, I can't wait for what's coming next. I'm really scared to pick now. <laughs> Could we go to the member of the sex <laughs> over there? Is this how it usually is, these things, or like... Um, I've never heard a question If I was like, like a CEO before. of a real company, I could at least say something. Could we go to the member in the third row? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, uh, Hi. my name's Camila. Um, What's your name? Camila. Oh, nice to meet you. Camila. Uh, oh, I forgot my question. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no um, pressure after that genius of a question. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> So you're saying that you still have that little voice in your head saying you can't do it or a bit mo demotivated, but you believe in yourself a bit more than that. So did you always have that belief inside of you or did you have to develop that? Yeah, I always believed in myself. I think that it's in the, in the, indus in the thing that I do in the industry that I'm in and you have to, yeah, I mean, you just have to have, you have to believe, you know, because it's, you just have to believe. Because you go to audition after audition after audition and you're just sitting and waiting for the phone to ring and you don't know where your next paycheck is coming from, especially you know, when you're starting out and people have been doing it for 10, 15 years too. You have to believe because then do something else. you know. Because you can defeat yourself even before coming into an audition room. And if you keep doing that, you're never gonna get work. You have to have this kind of sense of, I always felt within me that I was going to do something great. I don't know where it came from. Maybe my parents always instilled that within me when I was young. Anything I did, even when I played badminton, or like, I always wanted to be the best, you know. Um, in acting, I didn't become an actor just because, oh, I kind of liked acting. I became an actor because every fiber in me was like, I'm going to make a living doing this. I'm not gonna just, this is not a hobby. Because this thing happens when you act. Sometimes, even though you've rehearsed the lines, you know exactly what you're about to say next, you know exactly what your scene partner is about to say next, you've rehearsed it a thousand times, sometimes what happens is, in the moment, you experience truth. Where even though you know these are not your words, they actually become your words. And the person you're acting with they lose their identity and they become the person you're act, not the person you're acting with, but the character, they become that. When you experience that, it's like experiencing truth for the first time. And once you experience that, it's very addictive. It's like breaking through the illusion of, of this and actually experiencing truth for the first time. When you experience that, you always are then trying to experience that again. And that's what it is about being an actor, is you're always diving within to try and make these words that are not yours and this situation that is not yours real, right? And that's why I love being an actor, because I really get to explore the basis of truth. That's what gets me up in the morning. That's why I love acting more than anything. So, yeah, that's why I decided. And that's why I believe, even to this day. Yeah. Could we go to the member in the third row there? Yeah. I'm Maruti, by the way. Um, What's your name? Maruti. <laughs> like the car, yes. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm not laughing. <laughs> but that's <laughs> hilarious. I know. Maruti is like the most famous car in India. It's like if your name was Honda. <laughs> Yes, what it the, is. What, 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 I was <laughs> explain that to me. Uh, I was born on Hanuman Jayanti. Maruti is another name for Hanuman. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Please erase this tape, you guys. Like I can't. 
Okay, but in my defense, <laughs> not a lot of people know that. Not a lot of people know that, yes. Um, big fan of the show. Thanks. Probably the only science show accurate with science, riddled with amazing scientific humor. Do you think a show like that, well, it inspires the next generation for sure, but do you think we need to do more shows like that which can inspire the next generation to follow these kind of passions further? Yeah, I think so. I think um, the greatest thing about the show was when I met people who said, oh, my parents, uh, now my kids want to do astrophysics because of you. I was like, cool, you know? And I also met parents who were like, oh, my kids want to be an actor because of you. That's very cool. Um, do we need more shows? Yeah, of course. Any shows that inspire people to do something bigger than themselves is, is, is wonderful, you know? So if, so yeah, I guess, yes. And where do you see those shows coming from? So. Are they going to be more like Big Bang Theory, or do you think they would have to be a mix of humor and other things involved as well? Or? I don't know. I think, I haven't really thought about it. I think that, look, as long as the, we keep creating, there's going to be shows like Big Bang, and then there's going to be shows like the Kardashians. You know, I think that it, they all exist. There's a place for all of it. Um, so, yeah, I guess there will be more shows like Big Bang. You know, Young Raj, yeah. <laughs> Old fat Raj, probably. <laughs> Could we go to the man in the second room? Yeah. Are there still classes going? Are you guys in exam time? What is going on? No, that's next term. That's next term? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Um, bouncing off the back of that question that was just asked, is there any particular film, TV show that you'd like to be a part of that you haven't been yet? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Man, that'd be so cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. But no, I mean, I'd love to like pick up a sword and like kill things, zombies and stuff, you know? Some bad, something badass, you know? Something like take my shirt off and come out of the ocean and like fight a monster. Based off of that, if you could play any character on Game of Thrones, which one would it be? Obviously Jon Snow, come on. <laughs> I mean, is that a real question? Does anyone want to play anything else? <laughs> Other than, look at his hair, man. Kit is like... Yeah, this is great. <laughs> I can't get over your name's Maruti, I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> freaking me out. I'm having a panic attack over here, bro. I'm getting like super anxiety about it. Your parents were just cool with that, huh? Um, I got used to it. I like it, no, I like, I, I'm not even like, I think it's like genuinely cool, like it's cool. Yeah. I just, I kind of want to like be friends with you. I'll just, let's just hang out. Uh, my name is uh, Kubilay Ahmed Küçük. What's your name? Kubilay Ahmed Kubilay? Where are you from? Küçük, Turkish. Huh? Is that your real mustache? Uh, mustache? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, this is like a uh, slightly Ottoman style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it grows, like I can't stop it. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I... I'm cutting it, it No, comes. I mean you can. It's called shaving. Yeah, yeah it's quick, it's quick. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so... Um, my question is most, like, especially for your early career. Yeah. Uh, when you get uh, copyright holders or producers, and if you feel that you're gonna have a conflict, and if they were coming with an unfair offer, let's say you were saying you get scripts and then maybe you don't like, you will refuse, but if they are too powerful, how do you deal with them? How do you turn these things to an advantage? And especially in the beginning of your career, how were you, how were you handling them? Handling powerful producers? No, kind, um, let's say if you have conflicts, right? Let's say maybe copyright holders or other producers, some other authorities that you disagree with. I don't know. I've never. And do you have any experience on that that you could share? You know, I don't. I just hire lawyers to do all that stuff. Like, I mean, to be honest, I don't know. I think that the world of contracts and producing and copywriting is a very complicated thing. You play it by the rules and if someone tries to bend the rules, you get your lawyers involved, you know? That's sort of what I have done in the past. But in, the, in the beginning, like, you were not able to do that, isn't it? In or the beginning, I was not able to do that, but in the beginning, no one, I was very lucky, no one tried to take advantage of me in that way, you know? Sorry. <laughs> to the member in the first row. Hi, um, so in the show, Raj 
sort of, at least at the beginning after he gets over not being able to talk to girls, um, he sort of plays this bridge between the women in the show and the, the men while they're still kind of clueless in the earlier seasons. And um, that sort of happened at a time when this sort of idea of like a, a femininity within being a masculine character was not really a huge thing. And mm. so how much do you think that affected, I guess, the portrayal of men on TV or also in how we deal with um, sort of being comedic but still bridging those gaps between sort of typecasted roles? Mm. Um, I don't know, man. I didn't, I haven't, you know, it's interesting. I think that it's a very good question, right? But it's not something that you think about, I mean, I, that I thought about. I showed up every day, early to work, worked the hardest I could, tried to make light of every moment I could tried to create a genuinely funny character that has moments of truth and vulnerability. Then I went home and tried to live a pretty normal life as much as I could with fame and all the stuff that comes with it. But I never stopped to think about the social impact of my character. You know, I, I, just honestly, I never just tried to make a positive change in people's lives by making them laugh and inspire people and, and do that. But I never thought about the specific feminine, the femin, the femin, femin, what am I? Femininity. femininity. You say it? Femininity. Femininity? How do you say it? I Fem think it, I think it's, Femini honestly, I think it's easier to say in an American accent, but femininity. Femininity? Yeah, yeah, see? There you go. Femininity. I don't know, I mean, yeah, I guess I don't really have a good answer to that. You know, I just never stopped to really think about that part of it. I think Raj was sometimes masculine and sometimes feminine. Like we all are, you know, I mean, I, I am. Dependent on the day. <laughs> What's that even mean? <laughs> so stupid, I'm sorry. Can we go just <laughs> over to the member of the middle of the row? Hi, I'm Arnab. Uh, I was really inspired by by watching the uh, the show, and I wanted to do a PhD after after watching the show. Oh, cool! So thank you for inspiring me. I wanted to ask you if you had some similar role models when you were growing up, or or you wanted to emulate some kind of some characteristics of some actor or comedian that yeah. really inspired you. That's a good question. I mean, Tom Hanks was always one of my favorites because I think that he really blended uh, playing different types of characters with humanity and humor. Um, if you know Indian cinema, then you know Amir Khan, Nasiruddin Shah, uh, some of my favorites. Uh, Tom Cruise. Why are you laughing? <laughs> For my generation, bro, like he was the king, you know? Who's like a, what's a Tom Cruise equivalent for your generation? Chris Hemsworth? No? Or is Tom Cruise just like eternal? Is he just the guy? Seriously, what is like a Tom Cruise equivalent for your generation? I don't watch that many movies, so I Some Jason Momoa, maybe. Who? Jason Momoa, maybe. Jason Momoa? That hack? <laughs> I'm joking, I love him. I don't, I'm just joking, I don't even know why I said that. I said that because Raj hates Aquaman, that's the, the joke. I don't want him to eat me for breakfast. Um, what was the question? Yeah, Tom Cruise, I don't know, I answered it. Yeah, please, another question. <laughs> this is going so downhill, man. I'm gonna, like, Jason Momoa's gonna beat me up. I mean, I'm just in trouble. The member, yeah. I'm Armanj, also Turkish. Also, my own facial hair. Yeah. Um, I want to thank no, you. No, the question wasn't if it was his facial hair. The question was why. <laughs> that, that's a very good question. That's okay, I have this for a role that I'm playing. Why did you grow yours? Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I look childish, I guess. You what? It, <laughs> I guess this uh, makes me look more mature. You know, I know what you mean. Actually, you know, this one gives me a jawline, like it gives a nice jawline, right? Because it covers all of this like extra stuff on my chin. <laughs> I'm not saying that for you, I'm just saying for me. No, I agree, I, I definitely agree. Definitely. No, I'm serious, if you ever, uh, if you ever like concerned about your double chin as a, as a man, uh, grow a beard. <laughs> 
As uh, a lady, I just... Uh, firstly, thank you for uh, agreeing to speak in the union. Um, my question is, many of my favorite comedians are uh, currently focusing more on stand-ups because mm. they can use their own material. Uh, do you take note of jokes or things that you see in life? And if you were to do a stand-up, what would you like to talk about? Um, I, I've never, to, to be a good stand-up comedian, you also have to be a very good writer of your own jokes, you know what I mean? And so I never really got into it. I have a lot of friends who are great stand-up comedians, but I, it's never something that has appealed to me. Um, I like acting, I like going into a character, you know. Um, but if I was to do, I'm crazy, I've had a crazy life. So if I was to do stand-up comedy, it'd probably be all the anecdotes that I've experienced doing all the crazy things that I've done. Sharing those, that would probably be my stand-up, you know. Would you mind sharing something like that? <laughs> um, sure, what type of story do you want to hear? Um, I, I didn't catch that. What? I didn't catch that. Oh, what type of story do you want to hear? I can tell you something. What should I tell you? What's going to live on the internet forever? That's the story that I have to figure out. <laughs> it's too late now. I'm like, definitely like, the comments are going to be, you know when you get those thumbs up and thumbs down? <laughs> it's over for me. <laughs> what have I, I mean, I have a lot of experiences on airplanes because I fly so much. I sat next to this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? What? That was, oh, that was not a joke. That's the, the fact. Um, well, my first job in America was, uh, was housekeeping department. So I was cleaning toilets, uh, which I didn't know I was going to be doing until I was told to clean the toilets of the dormitories. And we had to clean the trash uh, comp trash compactors of the dormitories. And when you realize what people throw away in college, like people are disgusting. Like, I don't, uh, sorry, no offense. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, and there was this guy who was working with me, this Nepalese guy, his name was uh, Bhopal, lovely guy, green eyes. He wanted to be a Nepalese pop star. That's a different story for another time. <laughs> and this guy kept telling me, when you open the compactor, jump to the side because of wave, wave. I'm like, wave, what does that mean? Anyway, me being literally, just I opened the thing and he goes to the side and I'm like, what? And as he does this, this wave of hot gas that's been trapped in the compactor overtakes my body <laughs> and I start projectile vomiting <laughs> on him because I'm facing this way. <laughs> and Ever since that day, like whenever I think of wave or any, like the wave, like the wave, you know, I think of that day when I vomited on him. That's not a great story. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't think he succeeded in becoming a pop star, but he would always sing his songs to me and they always had to do with the mountains. But each song was about the mountain. And I didn't have the heart to tell him to think of something else to sing about. <laughs> Very sweet chap. I wonder what happened to him. <laughs> Can we go yeah. to the member in the second row? In the scarf? No. Just in the blue hoodie. Hi, my name is Harry. Um, enjoy the show. I just want to ask as a parent in this audience uh, to reflect on your like, childhood as a student, uh, how that shaped uh, who you are right now. Yeah. And were you always a jokester, like, as a student? Was I always a jokester? Yeah, goofing around or? Yeah, I think I grew up in a family that was, I was the youngest, they were quick-witted, and if you didn't have a quick wit, you were kind of eaten alive. You know what I mean? Like, you had to, like my, yeah, like, I can't say that on camera. I'll tell you guys later. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I had to, I think, have a quick, quick wit. I think it, um, I used it also in a way when I was insecure to sort of, I used it as my armor, as my shield, um, when I was bullied, you know, or if I ever felt I was being made fun of because of my ethnicity or the way I spoke, or I would use humor as a way to deflect the situation. Um, but I'm a product of the college system. I did four years of my bachelor's and then three years of my master's in acting. So for seven years I was in college. 
uh, and I loved it. I loved it because I had so much fun, you know? I did, like I, I never, I studied, I didn't study for my business degree as hard because I didn't care about it as much and I just did enough, like I got BB plus, you know, like that. But for my acting, once I discovered that's what I wanted to do, day and night was just spent diving into my training to be an actor. So you never thought about acting before college? Just for fun, but nothing serious. Because I didn't know that there was a thing that you could do to train to be an actor. At the time, I just thought, oh, make a funny face or something dumb like that. You know, I didn't really have any sense that you could break down a script and you could figure out a way to say a line. Like if you said, you know, uh, whatever, like pass me the water. I didn't know that you could say, hey, pass me the water. Or you could say, hey, hey just pass me the water. You know, or you should pass me the water. I didn't know you could interrogate and you could state a fact in the same sentence. I didn't know you could break down scripts like that. So once I began to realize how you could do things like that, it just blew my mind. So my whole time was spent exploring that universe. But I also had a lot of fun. And that was very important for me, this sense of play. Because if you guys don't take this time to really enjoy yourselves in this environment, when you go out there, it's not going to get easier. You know, when you're out in, not the real world, this is also the real world, but when you get out there, it's, it's a lot scarier because you don't have the cocoon, I guess, of the university life. So take this time to really get to know people, explore each other, explore yourselves. You have to get out of your own way in this environment because if you don't, then you live your life in a very limited, small perception. This is your opportunity to blow, to blow it off and become infinite. Because you're protected. So you have to have fun. You have to have fun. Whatever that means to you, you have to have fun. Because it will make you better at whatever it is that you do. Because you won't be so caught up in your own way trying to get it right. You'll get it right, yeah, it's okay. It'll all be fine. You have to have fun. You have to have fun. That's, that's what's very important for me. Whatever that means for you guys. But you must. You must. Yeah. Could we go to the member in the back, in the gray um, coat, I think. Uh, yeah, there. <clears throat> Thank you for a very interesting talk. It was really great to listen to you. Oh, good, thanks. Um, I'm a parent. I was at Oxford years ago then when traveling, I have a I'm asking a practical question. Yeah. I have a 15 year old son who was okay. born in Brussels, went to Delhi where we were posted to live four years there, then went to Brussels back again, now in England in school, that is what I brought him. He's 15, year old, 15 years old and busting to be an actor. Hmm. So he's, he tells me, I don't, once I finish school, why should I go to university? Hmm. He says, why can't I go straight to Lambda? Hmm. And he said, all I want to do is acting or be a professional rugby player. So between, <laughs> so between well, the Are two, you Indian? Sorry? You're, you're Indian? Uh, yes, I'm of Indian origin. I have overseas of citizenship Indian? of India. And I've lived in India. And I'm into Stella Maris College. But your son wants to be a rugby player? Yeah, he play, he's, my husband's uh, not Indian. No, but he's, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because <laughs> physically, I was going to say, this is what we get, guys. Like, <laughs> That's the no, reason no. we're number one at cricket no, and not rugby. No, he's 15 years old and he's there already. Were he strong? <laughs> You're so funny, this guy. I was just, uh, this, um, there was a gentleman who works at British Airways, okay, and he's uh, from uh, South India. Uh, short guy, sweet, very sweet guy, okay, and he works at BA. And I fly a lot from LA to London, BA, so I've gotten to know him over the years. And he told me the other day, he's escorting me through the airport chatting, he's like, oh, you won't believe my son is training right now, you know. He's training right now to, because he's going to be an Olympic sprinter. And I said, what? <laughs> Your son, no offense, is going to be an Olympic sprinter. He's like, yeah, he's, he's training to be an Olympic sprinter. And he showed me a picture of this guy. And he's like, I was like, this is your son? You know, but I didn't say it like that. You know, I, I said, this is your son. Oh, it's OK. When I was in Turkey, when my older son was there, they would ask me, is that your son? Because yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, to me. He was a different size. And I would look at him and say, yeah, that's my son. So he wants to be an act. Anyway, I don't know. We're going off topic, but he wants to be. He wants to be an actor. Or a he's rugby 15 player. 15 years old, and he's doing uh, extra classes for drama. 
Yeah, yeah, good. Addition to being in school. Just make sure he trains. Whatever he does, he has to train as to be an actor. Well, today he has county training for rugby, so he trains. Either good, he's good, training good. in rugby. Just or make he sure he studies as hard as he can if he wants to be an actor. Like in acting. So, but you said you kept a, a second career. Now that's, that's my advice because I come from India. My parents would always just say, "Just give him one that. slap." <laughs> <laughs> just be like, idiot. <laughs> Listen to me. Exactly. One on the bum. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be okay. But you you don't think it's necessary? Yeah, I mean, look, I I know nothing about children. Okay, uh, I. I did what worked for me uh, because for me personally also to take care of my family was very important. To have the, I always knew no matter what I did, I have to have my responsibility of taking care of my family because they took care of me. So if the acting didn't, didn't work out, I'd still need a way to take care of them. So it was important for me to have something to fall back on. Uh, but times have changed now, you know, I mean, if he, he'll be okay. Just let him, just let him be, it's okay. Just tell him, study hard though. If he wants to be an actor, it doesn't just come like that, you know. It's not given in the industry like that to anyone. And everyone is so good. It's, it, it's this misnomer that, no, the truth is when you're at a final callback for any show, any play, any movie, at the top level, everyone is so damn good. It's just the way it is. You know, anything you guys do too, Everyone is going to be so, you guys are at the top level of what you're doing. Everyone at that level is going to be good. Everyone. So, you just got to be prepared, you know. Thank you. Thanks. We have time for one more question. Only one more question? <laughs> yeah, it's almost an hour. Oh. What are you guys going to do after this? <laughs> Where should we go? Could we go to the member <laughs> in the back row there? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, so my question, I'm not really sure if it's a bit weird, uh, but like obviously you lived in India and that's why your accent's Indian, right? Yeah. But when you move abroad, like it's quite natural for your accent to like kind of yeah, change. Yeah, switch, yeah, yeah. But like how come yours has it? I don't know. <laughs> you know why? I think because I, I think in this cadence. I think that's why. Like I formulate thoughts in this cadence, and I think that's why it's stuck. But sometimes, now especially, I've been there so long, but like if I'm talking to my American friends, I'm like, hey man, when are we gonna go to the party? You know, like, let's just, <laughs> let's like grab a beer and go. And I'm like, wait, what? And then sudden, sometimes I'm here, I'm like, you know, you know, you start, you know, just like, what's going on? You know, it's all, all suddenly talk like this. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, the, I, I got into the cab the other day, and I was like, yeah, you know, so like, can you get a Sloan Square? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm doing a British accent in this new TV show I'm doing, right? So I've been practicing my British accent. So I'm all over the place, okay? So it's not like I sound a certain way. I, I'm just all over the place, you know? Because people, you know, you get those like accent people, you know, who are like, oh wait, he's inauthentic. He's now speaking like this. Look at him. I'm like, okay, I'm inauthentic. I don't know. Like sometimes I speak like this, sometimes I speak like that. Like I'm an actor. What do you want me to do? You know? <laughs> That's another thing. Why try to be anything? Just be whatever you want to be, whenever you want to be. Seriously, I don't know why we are so stuck in having to be a certain way. It's so stupid. Be free. Be exactly who you want to be, when you want to be. It's such an easy way to live. I think that, especially when you're young, you get very stuck in a way that you have to be. Don't be like that. Let everyone else be like that. You, in here, you be free. You be whatever it is that you want to be. Because the only one that's gonna be in your way is your own self. You just remove that and you be free. That's, that's, if there's anything I can tell you guys is that. Because the only one that's gonna be in your way is you. It's so simple actually. It really is so simple, you know. Should you take one more question? These guys are disapprovingly looking at me, huh? I'm, I'm sorry. We do have to, okay, and I'm up. getting signals from the back to oh, cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. Thank you so much for coming though. Did you want to take a picture? Oh yeah, let's do this. I, I, I would request everyone to stand up and we'll all face this way and everyone look very serious and just stand at attention. <laughs> and then do you guys mind if I post that on Instagram or anything? You guys have any issues with that? No? Anyone? It doesn't matter, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, how will I be? So, but wait, go back a little, right? Go back. So we can all get into it somehow. And come in also, don't be shy. How will you get everyone? How will you get everyone? But wait, I'll just get... Wait, but everyone, can everyone just go back as much as you can? Just go back, sorry. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Because I want to get this picture right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Just keep, guys in the back, just go back a bit. Just go back a bit, please. Oh, it's not going to work. Let me see. Let me see if it works. Can I stand on this? Are you sure? Okay. I just want to see if this is going to frame. Let me just see one sec. Yeah, wait. But I have to be in the picture, wait, also. I just want to frame it to see if it'll work. Yeah, but everyone look really serious. And put, don't, don't do this with your hands, do this with your hands. Yeah, very cool, okay? Yeah, so good. Okay, wait, will you stand and then just take it from there? Okay, you'll have to elevate. Yeah, be careful, huh? don't hurt yourself. Yeah? I'll make it in black and white later, it'll look very cool. No, yeah, then, but first one very serious, okay? If one idiot is smiling, no? <laughs> I'm gonna catch you guys. I'm ready to hound you guys. Okay, now on three, one crazy one, okay? One, two, three. Good? Yeah. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs>